I always ask God, but He gives me always more than what I ask. From the rugged mountains of Dagestan to the top of the UFC lightweight division, Islam Makashev has carved out a formidable fighting career. Islam is very good. I told you. After a close-fought and somewhat controversial title defense against current featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky, he solidified his status as the undisputed champion, with a professional record of 24 wins and only one loss. Islam can become greatest lightweight ever, you know? But how did he get to this point, and what makes him such a dominant force in the octagon? From his upbringing in Dagestan to his close friendship with Habib Nurmagomedov, there are many factors that have contributed to his success. So let's dive deeper into the life and career of Islam Makashev. Islam Makashev was born in 1991 in Makhachkala, the capital of Dagestan, in Russia, but grew up in a small village called Bershi. He's part of the Lak ethnic group, which is pretty rare, numbering only around 200,000 people. That's roughly the same amount of people that every year attends Coachella. It shouldn't be too surprising then that Islam and Habib Nurmagomedov were childhood friends. Islam was first exposed to Sambo, a Russian combat sport centered around grappling and throws, when he saw Habib training with his father. Islam fell in love with the sport and started participating in competitions at the national level when he was just 14. From there, his transition to MMA was seamless. In 2009, he quickly rose to prominence in the sport, training alongside some of Russia's top fighters and coaches, including featherweight striker Zabit Magomed Sharipov, rising middleweight star Magomed Ismailov, and wrestler Islam Sailev. However, it was Khabib's father, Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov, who had the most profound influence on Makashev's development as a fighter. I meet Habib and his father. We went to the same school with Habib time, and I wanted to see where he's training, who his coaches, and I went to the same gym training there. Years of hard work and top-notch training helped Islam to dominate the regional circuit, and Abdulmanap's guidance elevated his game to the level required to eventually become a known name in this brutal sport. In the years that followed his transition to MMA, Islam continued to refine his skills and made waves in regional MMA promotions in Russia. He quickly became a top prospect with a record of 11 wins, leading to many MMA fans taking notice of his well-rounded skill set. Like the fans, the UFC's talent scouts took an interest in Islam's well-rounded skill set, including his strong Sambo background and solid striking and grappling abilities. And so Dana White invited him to join the UFC. Obviously, the Dagestani fighter accepted, and thus began his conquest of the lightweight division. trunks for Makachev, black trunks for Kuntz. Kicking off his UFC career, Makachev faced Leo Kuntz in May 2015. As I mentioned during the walk-in, coached by Habib Nurmagomedov's father. The fight was a showcase of Makachev's Sambo skills, as he effortlessly dominated Kuntz with his grappling and ground game. And Kuntz is looking for an opportunity where he can spin around and wind up on top. It didn't take long for Islam to finish the fight, submitting his opponent in the second round with a rear naked choke. Uh, thank you very much for the congrats. I came, I fly here in the U.S. earlier, like one month, and uh, I came to this fight in my top shape. Islam's perfect professional record came to a halt in October 2015 at UFC 192 when he faced off against Adriano Martins. Despite Islam being the favorite to win the fight, Martins landed a devastating blow that sent him to the mat. Big shot by resulting in his first and only loss in the octagon. 
Although Martins was the only fighter to have knocked out Makachev, it's worth noting that he was not able to capitalize on his victory and was ultimately cut from the UFC roster after two winless years. Following his first and only loss at UFC 192, Makachev took nearly a year off from fighting to work on his striking abilities. He teamed up with the American Kickboxing Academy and put in the hard work necessary to take his game to the next level. <laughs> He then returned to the UFC in September 2016 to face off against Chris Wade. He emerged victorious after a hard-fought battle, and his career began to gain momentum. The way he was able to pull my knees in together, lock his hands, and pull me away from the cage, his power from there was... I never felt that before. In 2017, he faced Nick Lentz, in a one-sided affair, showcasing his impressive grappling skills and dominance on the ground. Nick Lentz is allowing him to control both sides of his body. He's letting him get the left underhook, and he's letting him control his wrist with his right hand. Lentz had no answer to Islam's takedowns and ground and pound, and the fight ended with Islam being declared the winner. Job. An excellent control by Makachev. A clear victory. This fight was a turning point that established him as one of the top contenders in the UFC's lightweight division. In his next few fights, Islam continued his dominant streak and dispatched his opponents with relative ease. But in April 2019, he faced his biggest challenge yet in the form of Armin Sarukyan, an Armenian-Russian wrestler. I just train hard every day, and my, my mind is very strong. Uh, Islam, he's on different level, you know, his wrestling, um, his wrestling is good, his striking is good, you know, and um, I know just, uh, I know one guy who can beat him, it's me, and that's it. Sarukyan's wrestling proved to be a tough puzzle for Islam to solve. As he was taken down and unable to inflict significant damage with his ground and pound, leading to a grueling three-round fight. I believe myself and I know one day I'll be a UFC champion. A lot of knowledge and experience in that corner, right, right accessible to him. I'm going to beat everybody and uh, get my goal. But when the dust settled, the judges awarded the victory to Makashev. At UFC 242, in September of the same year, Islam put on an impressive performance against the Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, Davi Ramos, reminding everyone that he's not just a grappling wizard, but a well-rounded fighter with skills in every aspect of the game. Despite both fighters having impressive grappling credentials, the fight mostly took place on the feet in a strategic chess match. After a bit of a slow start, Makashev started to find his range and outlanded Ramos with his striking. Ramos did manage to hurt Islam with a left hook in the second round, but the Dagestani fighter showed his toughness by weathering the storm and coming back with his own power punches. In the end, the judges scored the fight in his favor. Thank you, thank you. You know, I beat today a very tough opponent. Shalom Aleikum. This is crazy. I like this. Identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. We've been closely monitoring the situation with the coronavirus and its potential impact on the health and safety of UFC athletes, staff, and fans around the world. After a tumultuous year of postponed and canceled fights due to COVID-19 restrictions, MMA fans were eagerly awaiting the return of the Dagestani fighter to the octagon.
Finally, on March 6, 2021, he would make his highly anticipated comeback against Drew Dober. But this was no ordinary fight for Islam. It was a massive step up in competition, pitting him against a dangerous striker in Dober, who had won three straight fights, including two by knockout. The pressure was on for Makashev to prove himself against a formidable opponent, and he did not disappoint. Drew Dober is nasty, no doubt. From the opening bell, Islam displayed his world-class grappling skills, taking Dober down and controlling him on the ground. What, I love that pass. That pass was so smooth. It kept all of his weight on the front of Drew Dober's body, on the top half. Despite Dober's attempts to get back to his feet, Makachev remained in dominant position, patiently waiting for the opportunity to sink in a submission. Putting the finishing touches on what can only be described as a 10-8 round. Yeah. In the third round, that opportunity presented itself, and he quickly capitalized, securing an arm triangle choke and forcing Dober to tap out. Look at Dober's face. Yeah, it's definitely felt like he's been doing that since he was four years old. Right. You know, like, like, I mean, I, I felt on point. Like, I felt ready. I felt I could have beaten 99% of the roster. But, uh, man, the, the game that he implemented, all right, the, 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 the things that he he's good at, he was phenomenal at. It's With this victory, Islam sent a clear message to the entire lightweight division that he was back and more dangerous than ever before. And for fans who had been eagerly awaiting his return, it was a thrilling performance that lived up to the hype. Despite being one of the top fighters in the lightweight division, Islam's path to the title was always going to be challenging, given that his close friend and mentor, Habib, held the belt. However, when Habib's father and coach passed away from COVID-19 complications, Habib shifted his focus and decided to retire undefeated. And no way I'm going to come here without my father. At that point, he turned his full attention to coaching fellow Dagestani fighters, including Makachev and his own cousins Usman and Umar Nurmagomedov. Now he's retired, but he's still training with us. He still helps us. Under Habib's guidance, but also that of Javier Mendez, who has coached almost a dozen MMA champions over the years, Islam would continue to rise up the ranks of the UFC's lightweight division, defeating the likes of Tiago Moises, Dan Hooker, and Bobby Green. To finally earn a title shot in October 2022 against submission specialist Charles Oliveira. This is your toughest fight so far. Though. I know. Gente, vocês falam demais. Vocês correram pra caraco. Eu luto contra você em qualquer lugar do país. Para de falar These guys always want to mind if I doesn't speak English. Nobody understands you. Why did? I think Charles Oliveira wins. Charles will get the job done. You know, Charles Oliveira. Yeah. Oliveira's gonna win. I think Charles Oliveira gets the job done. Oliveira was known for his considerable striking skills and reach advantage, but Makashev showed complete dominance of the cage, taking the fight to the ground and even dropping Oliveira with a hard strike in the opening round. Well, opinions are subjective, and some people believe that um, I would be a, a potential winner, he would be a potential winner, but I'm going to show that my historic, my background, and the number of fights I've had, the, the, my contenders, this will come to show on that very night. And I'll, in this sense, I'll shock the world because people will change their opinion about this. Although Oliveira initially seemed to have an edge in the striking game, it never came to fruition in this match. In the second round, Islam dropped Charles with another big shot and followed up with a head and arm triangle to secure the victory and the lightweight title. It was a dominant performance that left no doubt as to who the top lightweight in the UFC is. To beat Oliveira is one thing, to beat him the way he beat him is another, and as fast as he did it, uh, he looked incredible tonight. Habib was overjoyed at seeing his protege win the belt, having achieved his father's ambitions. Nothing against Charles Oliveira, but Islam on another level. Yeah. Just people have to understand. Yeah. yeah, they have to understand. Islam is very good. I told you. Mm -hmm. I always ask God, but he gave me always 
more than what I ask. Alhamdulillah. And Before moving on, let's address the elephant in the room. The difference in fighting style between Islam and his mentor, Habib. Habib's style was feared by opponents due to his overwhelming dominance. Habib! The Eagle! He would begin by throwing punches and then quickly go for the double leg takedown. He would then finish the fight with powerful ground and pound, or submissions. In contrast, Islam also initiates with strikes, but he is more inclined to trade shots. While Habib had a more dominant and overpowering approach, Islam tends to be more patient, carefully outgrappling opponents like Nick Lentz or wearing them out with submissions, as he did with Drew Dober. Islam is also a bit more diverse with his striking, and he likes to use single-leg trips to throw his opponents off balance. Even with these differences, there's no denying that Islam has learned much from Khabib and has applied his teachings to great effect in his fights. With his skills and dominance now well established, Islam entered the octagon against Alexander Volkanovsky at UFC 284 in February 2023 to defend his title. Islam Makachev, well, Islam's gonna win the fight. You don't think anyone in the 155 pound weight division beats Islam anytime? That dude is so good. It's definitely a challenge. Like, I know it's a challenge. I'm not gonna sit out here and say it's not a challenge. But is it a challenge I can uh, overcome and get through? 100%. I guarantee you I can. What followed was a long and grueling five-round battle in which both fighters showcased their skills and exploited weaknesses in their opponent's game plan. While Islam was able to successfully defend against Volkanovsky's grappling and wrestling attempts, Volkanovsky was able to keep Makashev from fully establishing his dominance in the fight. There were a million ways this fight could have gone, but in the end, what we got was a wild five-round scrap that saw both men have success on their feet and the mat. We should note that Volkanovsky landed 70 significant strikes against Makashev, which is more than Islam's six previous opponents combined. Still, he was unable to get the victory by knockout. In the end, Volkanovsky failed to take the lightweight belt from Makashev, losing in a unanimous decision. However, it was close enough that a win for either man would have been justifiable. Obviously, uh, a lot of people are going to be happy with that because they didn't give me a chance, but I gave my, myself a chance and I was expecting a win. Um, I knew he was really good. I just knew I prepared uh, properly. And, but hey, it was as his UFC career continues to rise, Islam's dominance in the octagon is undeniable. I need some top five. I have improved. I have to improve. Thank you, Perth. I'm coming for you guys. Thank you. With his incredible grappling skills and newfound striking prowess, he has taken down some of the toughest opponents in the lightweight division. He has been guided by the legendary Nurmagomedov's family and continues to pay tribute to his mentors with every win. With his latest victory over Alexander Volkanovsky, he has proven that he is not just a one-dimensional wrestler, but a complete mixed martial artist. As fans and experts alike continue to sing his praises, it is clear that Makashev's star is only going to shine brighter in the years to come. With the coveted lightweight title belt safe around his waist, the world is his oyster, and the future looks more exciting than ever for this Dagestani champion. At only 31 years of age and with few notable injuries sustained through his career, Islam could potentially continue his fighting career for a decade to come. Whether he holds the belt for years to come is a question that only time will answer. <laughs>